Oh, oh. You found it? I found it. I found it. I found it. Yes. Oh, yes. Woo-hoo. Look at that. Oh, my God. Oh, that's gold. I told you. Oh, yes. 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 Gordon, mate. Gordon. Well done, Gordon. Well done. Woo. We wake to Gordon's morning chant. Come on, get up, move around. Keep it down, Gordon. <laughs> get up, move around. Ain't no sleeping with Gordon around. He is an early riser. He's clearing out the debris from under the quad bike. We've got to be really careful because in the heat of the day, the heat of the engine, all this little sort of grass clippings here can catch fire and we can lose a quad bike. That wouldn't be a good idea. So we're gonna head off this morning, about 7.3 kilometers through this thick scrub to a place called Anderson's Corner. Now this is a significant place because this is where in 1977 that Dick ended his first failed attempt to get to the Kookaburra. But he laid a plaque there. Now three or four days earlier, He's been here and he couldn't find it, so our mission today is to find that plaque. As we head out past the Kookaburra site, we know no one has been here for over 40 years. Well, here we go. We're back in the thick of it again. We found the Kookaburra. Now we're going to go and find Anderson's Corner. We'll attempt to find Anderson's Corner. The tire's flat at the back. Yeah, this whole dead tire, I'm going to pump a tire up. Copy that. It's just tire Very after cool. tire. There's four plugs just here. OK. A little bit uh, lost in the bush now. I think just back there, that last set of lights, I should have taken a left instead of a right. Coming away. No, I'm feeding my face whilst I'm driving, but man's got to eat. 300 metres to go. This is it, eh? End of the line. Around here somewhere. It's definitely opened up a lot. That's Dick Smith there, yeah, 1977. There's the plaque. Now, apparently, Dick was here, like I said, a few few days ago. Well, three or four days ago. He couldn't so find it. You should be able to see his skids around here somewhere where he's dropped the chopper on the deck. Well, that picture was taken 40-odd years ago, at least. I reckon a few fires have been through, and now trees could well and truly just look like that now. The search starts and everyone fans out. Any luck? We are in the right spot. This tent peg has lasted 43 years out here. That's a good hammer in job. What do you got? Can you just check around that tree there for me? Yeah, mate. Please, just, just looking at the photo and. After hours of searching, we call it. We have to reach main camp before dark. I phone Dick Smith, asking for any ideas. Hello, Dick. Yeah, it's it's Jason here, mate. How are you going? Yeah, yeah. So we're at Anderson Corner and we found um, a lone star picket and two tent pegs in the ground. Well, that's amazing because we were there last week, couldn't find anything like that. We, yeah, we can't find anything, any... We've looked at a couple of trees, well, heap of trees, but we can't find those ghost gums. So he wants us to mark the tent peg and that star picket. He wants to ping it on the GPS. Star picket, Anderson's corner. And... Done. Dick was quite happy with the fact that we, we found this random star picket and, and the tent pegs because he seems to think that this is where the original camp was, at Anderson's Corner. Um, and, well, look, we're in the middle of the Tanami Desert. There wouldn't be a star picket here for any other reason. And there it is. That tent peg has been sitting there for 40 years. It may be no plaque, but that is a sure sign that we got to the place that we needed to get to. Gordon's keen to check out one last spot. What do you got? 
bit of wire. They might have used that to strengthen the concrete, maybe. Here's a nail. Nails, wires. Have a peg back there. There's a lot going on here, eh? This was a camp. You want to grab the shovel? Ooh, ooh. You found it? I found it. Oh. I found it. Oh. I found it. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Woohoo! Look at that. Oh my God. Oh, that's gold. <laughs> I told you. Oh yes, yes. Oh, well yes, done. yes. Gordon, mate. Well Gordon. Done. Well done, Gordon. Well done. Woo. Gordon's like, oh, there's, you know, when there's a ghost gun, there's got to be more, you know what I mean? There's not just a lone one. They always plant with others. Yeah. You know? Remnants of one. That could be the remnants of the original tree. <laughs> Aviators Keith Anderson and Robert Hitchcock perished in this area in April 1929 after their aircraft, the Kookaburra. Dick Smith, Kookaburra Expedition, July 1977. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, look at it. There it is. You found the plug, but I found the concrete. <laughs> yeah, Dick, it's Jace here, mate. Guess what? We found it. Yeah, we found the plug. How did you do that? Oh, uh, we just Gordon, Gordon with us, and he um, he decided to give it one more go before we left, and um, we started searching around what looked like an old ghost gum that had burnt down. Wonderful what you can do with a really good Aboriginal tracker. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I couldn't believe when the second phone call came in. I thought, look, I really thought there was a chance they were going to be able to find the plaque. But then again, I'd been there and couldn't find it. And I put it there in the first place. And I remember thinking, gee, maybe we didn't really know where Anderson Corner was, which we didn't because we're using an old theodolite. But when I got that second phone call, we found it and I could feel the vibes in the air, the excitement, absolutely fantastic. And I think the lucky was that you had the Aboriginal tracker with you, but most importantly, you had a metal detector. That was brilliant because I thought the plaque would be just sitting there as it was where I left it. Mate, what an amazing feeling. We have to get traveling, but we clean up and mark the site for when Dick Smith returns. We'll lose it again, mate. Tell yourselves that easy to find for us. That isn't a needle in a haystack. I don't know what is. G'day, guys. This video is brought to you today by the Boss Shadow 270 XL from Camp Boss 4x4. Today, I want to show you the new awning from Camp Boss 4x4. Now, this is a 270, so it wraps around 270 degrees, and it's a freestanding full A frame awning. What I'll do is I'll set the thing up and I'll show you how easy it is to set up by yourself. We'll do the back section first. Now I've already got the little hooky things here. Now these have a little ratchet on the end of them. So I just clip that onto the end here, like that. And pretty much you just pull that ratchet, nice and tight. Set the front bit up, same setup. just hook that on the end there. Pull your ratchet, like that, pull it nice and tight like that okay it's got three led lights one in each of the arms it's got a zipper in the back here so that zipper is to allow you access to a rooftop tent and that's pretty much it anyway that's enough from me keep checking out the video it's 33 kilometers to the sinkhole in a straight line we're on our way out. We've drawn a straight line where we found the last plaque from Anderson's corner back to the sinkhole. We made that executive decision because we thought we're driving against our old track, we're driving into all the stuff we knocked down. And a shorter route makes it a straight line, but I'll tell you what, it's been the biggest fail. Of course, it's way thicker. But hey, we've only got 25 k's to go, it's all good. To take it all in on the way back, it was um, it was amazing that the the journey um, to the site 
The feeling I had rocking up at the kookaburra, that feeling was just overwhelming, uh, just to feel. I think to feel something that on the site for my grandfather and, and what he's done, I will treasure that now. I think words can't um, explain how I feel. Um, I got on site and did something late that afternoon that, um, I don't know, that none of you guys caught on camera because I wanted to do that, which was good, and you guys respected that, which was awesome. And that morning I got up and did the same thing, uh, you know, something that I, I'd done. And um, I'm hoping you were standing there and watching me because the feeling of sleeping that night, I think it was one of the best sleeps I've had in a long time. We do tyre repair shop, 237 on the way out. Then later, near disaster hits. I tap Jesse, I said, Jess, I think Jason's bike's on fire, mate. And he's looking, he said, I don't see anything. I said, have another look, mate, it's smoking. When he realised it was on fire, I think the flames were coming out, and I don't know if it got him on the leg, actually, so he jumped off like a cage there, and he did jump off that thing, like, pretty high. Yeah, water, water. He come off pretty high off that bike, and then he was chasing, running around, and I had water, and beer water, and dude, there was a lot of swearing going on at the time. So I ran to the camera crew truck, opened the fridge, because we were looking for water. I did ask if he had a fire extinguisher. Anyway, I, I ran on the back, straight past that bike. I go and open the fridge and all I can see is 4X gold and I said, this will have to do, so I'll run over with two and shaking it as I'm going, crack it up and pour it on top. I think it got it. It's not burnt anymore, so we, yeah, it was 4X gold, mate. <laughs> so I didn't waste any two cans. That's not bad, but two 4X can on a, what, $60,000, $80,000 bike, I think we did good. <laughs> Simon, you on channel? Yeah, got ya. Yeah, mate, we just had a fire drama. On the buggy. Yeah, my quad bike caught fire. All good? Yeah, we got it out in time. We're just checking now. It still starts and everything. I don't think it was overly too bad, but I'll tell you what, it was close. There it is. Right in there is where it's been burning. Right there. We make the sinkhole right on sunset. All for adventure. The stuff you guys do to bring entertainment in a family room and to do that with you, yeah. I've always thought these guys flown to the site, do their stuff and go, nah. So I look at the show differently now. You know, they want to tell stories. I mean, if any other community has got any Aboriginal stories out there or any search or any rescue, I reckon give these fellas a call, all for adventures. and. Um, They'll tell it well and they'll get you out there too, with no problem at all. Thank you to Gordon for allowing All for Adventure to tell this amazing story. The next day, we are back on the fence line, now heading for the blacktop. Now, we need to complete this chapter, so I head for Sydney to visit, really, an adventurer's adventurer. This guy has done it all. <laughs> Dick, how you going, mate? Fantastic to meet you. <laughs> yes. What's Mate, that? Here it is. This is it. This is the plaque we spoke about on the, on the satellite phone. I can't, and that's so that... <laughs> I can't believe because what was about a week before I searched and searched for it. I know, and couldn't I know, find it. I know. And to think that that went in, what, 40 years ago, nearly 40 years ago, yes. and that you found it. You, you, congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you. What, what I'm going to do is get it all repaired and put yeah. proper welded studs on it and put it back. <laughs> Oh, look, we nearly didn't find it. As you know, we, we rang you first and said, I, I just can't find it. It's, it's not there. And then, and, then we, and then about an hour later, I think you were like, this guy's annoying me on the telephone. And I, and I found it. It's unbelievable. So. Well, when you rang back and you said you'd found it, I just couldn't believe it because that is an enormous desert out there. Oh. I remember when I first went to the Tanami, I thought, yes. this is a pretty rough, you know, uh, uh, dangerous place. It's very oh, dangerous. Yes, yes. And uh, then for, to find this little plaque, it just seems incredible. By the way, can I read it? Because yes, I've forgotten. Yes, read it. Aviators Keith Anderson and Robert Hitchcock perished here in this area on April 1929 after their aircraft, the Kookaburra, was forced down whilst making a vain search for their comrades in the Southern Cross. Whilst the remains of the Kookaburra were not found by our expedition, the plaque was laid in memory of these gallant men, Dick Smith Kookaburra Expedition, 
July 1977. Now, you might wonder, how could have I had a plaque? Yes, that's what I wondered. I... I'll tell you what the story was. I wasn't totally confident that we'd find the kookaburra, so we did two plaques. One plaque <laughs> saying that we'd found it, and I must have that somewhere in the archives. And this was the second plaque saying that we'd failed, and so we were able to leave the second plaque there. Yes, yes. <laughs> Did, so you, so you, you found the original sign in in the next year, seventy. Eight. Absolutely. I went yes. back and found the, the actual kookaburra yes. a year later. Yes. And I must tell you, we went to the site of this plaque and we were sort of camped there and we'd searched for, searched for three days, found nothing. Mm. Now, I'd been not going up in the helicopter because I don't reckon my eyesight's as good without the glasses. Yeah. And we'd nearly run out of fuel and nearly run out of water. And I said, look, I'll just do the last flight. So mm. we jumped into the little Bell 47 helicopter and we went airborne, flew around this, we call this Anderson's Corner, yeah, Anderson's where the plaque was yeah. and then I said to the pilot let's go a bit further north than we've been looking and he said Dick it's not going to be there I said no I said let's go further north yeah. and we went further north and looking straight down I couldn't believe it there's the kookaburra <laughs> and it was just so exciting because oh, mate, basically mate. it had been looked at for 20 years I think there'd been 16 expeditions yeah. we flew around and I remember we went down and we jumped off 16 and 16 expeditions from, to from 16 separate 16 separate expeditions over about 20 years wow. They've gone to search for it. Wow. Oh, look, I, look you should have seen the, the look and the, and the excitement on our team's face when we found that and you in a helicopter and found the kookaburra. If you didn't have a metal detector, would have you been able to find it? I don't think so. Yeah. And, I, and I think the reason being is we, we, we actually found your old camp. Right. So you, you obviously got to the end and you called it Anderson's Corner yep. and then we found the star picket. Remember I told yes. you? Yes. Yes, I found the star picket. And then we're looking around and then I think, and that's why I rang you. I said, do you remember where you put the plaque in relation to where you camped? And you're like, I, I can't remember, Jase. It was 40 years. And the interesting thing was the tree obviously is gone because that tree that was gone. there that we all marked, it didn't exist. Completely gone. Three, So three stumps, three yeah. stumps completely gone. Ah, oh, absolutely. What do you got there? Now, Dick, <laughs> this is something that I want to give to you, present to you from our expedition. Right. But it also, it also has to do with your failed expedition, but a triumph in the end. Right. That is magnificent. This will go in my adventure study, or maybe we could put it up on the adventure wall here in the hangar. Oh, wow, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be absolutely awesome. Look at that. As you can see, this regrowth here yes. is the three stumps, and we actually, they were burnt to ground level. Oh. And the three stumps were there like that. Yep. And then this was completely covered, yep. and the plaque was about here somewhere. It's really good to have enthusiasts like you who are keeping the spirit of adventure alive. Wow, look, that look, I, uh, <laughs> mate, I'm, I'm flabbergasted by your yeah. wall. By the way, this is interesting. This is the kookaburra research material that yes. I prepared. And in this is some incredible stuff. I mean, it's, there's a film of the kookaburra phase one. I don't think I've even seen that. Just hold on. This is a successful plaque. Now, the plaque you found was yeah. because I failed. Yeah. But I hadn't realised this has just come up. We, we obviously you, made you, two plaques. You, I haven't seen this for 40 years. Yeah, but you didn't put this, you didn't put this at the kookaburra site. No, because this was the plaque we did if we found the kookaburra. Oh, of course, in 77. Exactly the same <laughs> date. And it says here that they died at this site, was forced down on this site. This plaque is laid in memory of these gallant men, right? Isn't that amazing? Yeah, there's the other plaque. Grab oh, the other one. Here we go. I cannot there's, believe it. There you go. So, so look, they're very similar, in memoriam for their comrades, the Southern Cross, whilst remains of the Kookaburra were not found by our expedition. But it does show you one thing, I wasn't completely confident about finding no, the Kookaburra. I wasn't, <laughs> look, I wasn't confident I was going to get yes. 10 kilometres in. Like, we, I can't believe we did the 80 odd kilometres return, jib, uh, return journey. Well, look, that's absolutely fantastic. I'm going to take this down, we're going to get it all re redone some proper, we now know that you can't use silver soldering out there in the desert because no, it'll just come off. Yeah. So I think we'll get it done properly and aerodite it and it'll go back. Maybe we should put a little plaque nearby mentioning all four adventure, right? <laughs> oh, that would be gold. Relocating That it. would be gold. Or maybe if we go back next year for the anniversary, I think it's the 90th, and uh, we could have a celebration and at the site also put in a plaque for the Aboriginal people who are involved. Yes, which yes. would be wonderful. For Gordon. There is still work to do. There's another journey, I think another chapter to this. I'm grateful for, you know, Dick Smith and grateful for you guys bringing me along this journey. 
and I'll treasure this for a very long time. So I've got stories to tell too now. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed our most arduous adventure and possibly, I don't know, just most exciting and everything about it just it ticked all the boxes for all for adventure. So we'll see you guys next time. Somewhere off the beaten track. Introducing the new and improved home of Australian adventure, Unleashed TV. A growing library of content featuring the best of yeah. all your driving, Woo. fishing, Woo. touring, rebuilt, bush cooking, and whatever you call this. Stream entire seasons of the hit TV show All for Adventure, Unleashed, and more original series from Jason the team. Plus, get fresh new content exclusive to Unleashed TV subscribers. You can stream it all for just $9.99 per month. Now with no lock-in contract. That's why Unleashed TV is the home of Australian adventure.